The District Court for County of Washington, the State of Michigan, is now back in session. Honorable Judge Dave Frederick Simpson presiding. Thank you. You may be seated. Yes, bring the defendant out, please. Can we have Mr. Boyd back in seat, please? Thank you. What would you identify as in now? Just saying. Is that Miss Wilson behind? Are you going to have a seat? Yeah. Thank you. We're back on the record in the case of People's State of Michigan versus Isaiah Williams. I was informed on the recess. Council is present. And I was informed during the recess, Ms. Woodson, you had something that you needed to state on the record. That's correct, Your Honor. Uh, as the court is aware, the court gave me a break and an opportunity to speak to Mr. Williams. Um, during that break, our communication was not very effective, and Mr. Williams has informed me that it's not so much that he wants to represent himself, he doesn't want me representing him. And to the extent it requires an answer, I would just indicate that Mr. Williams, because of the court's ruling, gets an attorney. He does not get an attorney of his choice. So understand the record are we ready to proceed all right ready as well your honor all right you may call your first ones ma'am please come forward me swan Take your seat, raise your right hand. You sound swear or affirm the testimony about the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help you God. Have a seat. State your first and last name and spell it for the record. Daniel, Daniel, D-E-N-I-S-E. Thank you. You may inquire. Thank you. May I call you Denise? Okay. Uh, Denise, tell me your full name. Were you once known by the name Denise Williams? Do you know the defendant Isaiah Williams? How do you know Isaiah Williams? I was married to him. Okay. Uh, how long were you married to him? Uh, about four years, five, four or five years. Do you see Mr. Williams in the courtroom? Yes. Can you point him out, please, and describe what he's wearing? Your Honor, let the record reflect that Ms. Frazier Daniel has identified the defendant. Without objection, record shall so reflect. Your Honor, may I approach? You may. I'm approaching with what has been marked people's proposed exhibits one, two, and three. Can you take a look at these pictures and tell me if you recognize them, please? Yes. Exhibit one. Who is in exhibit one? My daughter, Olisa. Okay. What's Olisa's full name? Olisa Susan Williams. Okay. Um, about how old is Olisa in that picture? Uh, she is Ivana Okay. How about exhibit two? Olisa. Uh, how old is she in that picture? Around uh, eight nine months. Who is in exhibit three? Uh, is that a younger picture of Mr. Williams that he looked like um, several decades ago? Yeah. Okay. I'd ask Your Honor that exhibits one through three be admitted to evidence. Any objection or what, dear? Purposes only. All right. Exhibits one, two, and three are admitted. 
Denise, what is Olisa's date of birth? August 10th, 1996. Were you married to Isaiah Williams at the time of her birth? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Is Isaiah Williams her, her biological father? No. Is he her legal father? Is he on her birth certificate? Yeah. Your Honor, may I approach? You may. Denise, I'm handing you People's Burn Post Exhibit 9. Do you recognize what's in Exhibit 9? What's that? Okay. Whose birth certificate is that? Okay. It has your name and Mr. Williams' name as the parents on that birth certificate, correct? Yes. Your Honor, I'd ask that people submit nine to be admitted. Could Mr. Williams put the bag on the floor? Mr. Williams, is there a problem with the bag, sir? No, hold on a minute. Your Honor, you might have to take me back to the bullpen, but it's in the fourth and the executive out of order. And so if you want to do this, sir, do it. Get it out of my ear. Thank you. Bye. Let's go. No, no, you will have a Mr. Williams. Mr. Williams, you will have a seat. You will have a seat. Sit down. Now, sit down. You will stay there. Please remove the bag from him so that he is not disrupted. Counsel, you may proceed. Thank you. Denise, I have to ask, um, but what year did you marry, meet Isaiah Williams? What he just displayed in the courtroom, is that the Isaiah that you know? Okay. How how was Isaiah during treat his treatment of you during your marriage? Uh, abusive. Physically abusive. Physically abusive. I uh, ended up in the hospital. Objection as to relevance. This is all in the other acts evidence. This was all filed in a year and a half ago, Your Honor. Not only is it directly related to his motive, premeditation in this case, given the death of her daughter, but again, this is all admissible under 768.27b, propensity of violence against women. Objections overruled. You may continue. When you when you uh, became impregnated with Belisa, was Isaiah incarcerated at that time? I believe so. Okay. Were you two separated but still like, legally married? <clears throat> when was the last time you saw your daughter, Belisa Williams? Oh. She was nine months old at the time. And she was born August 10th, correct? Yes. Um, you've been interviewed, it's fair to say, by police many times over the last 41 years, correct? Yes. Do you recall giving the date of April 29th, 1982? That sounds familiar. Okay. Let me ask this. What state were you in when you last saw your daughter, Lisa Williams? Was that in Ohio? Yeah. What city in Ohio? Were you living there at the time? Okay. Who were you living there with? I was living with my friend Diane. At that time, if you were living with your, your friend Diane, were you separating yourself from the marriage of Isaiah Williams? Yes. Were you planning on leaving Isaiah Williams? Yes. Yeah. How did you meet Isaiah Williams? Uh, he's a thanks to my parents. Did you eventually begin dating him? Yeah. Okay. Did the how did the relationship start out? Started out good. Okay. Tell me when it was not good. Uh, it was uh, after we had moved in together. Okay. Do you recall approximately when that was? Uh, probably about around seventy-seven. 
When you moved in together, where did you and Isaiah Williams live? On the Ann Arbor. In the city of Ann Arbor? Yeah. Is that here in Washtenaw County? Yes. Yeah. Did you have another child at that time when you first were dating and living with Isaiah Williams? Yeah. Who was that child? Did Elizabeth continue to live with you? Uh, she lived with us, yes, for a time. Yeah. At some point, did she not continue to live with you? Yeah. Tell me about why that was. Uh, she uh, had witnessed the abuse that I may have told I me. Mean, so um, uh, my mother uh, had uh, had to touch the other. When you're living with him in the city of Ann Arbor, you're not married yet, correct? Right. Okay. Tell me how he's physically abusive to you. Tell me what is happening to you. I've been slapped and choked, and I've been told that I passed out. I've been, um, Did you yeah. ever call the police on him? I have not. Have you, you ever gone to the hospital because of your injuries? Yes. Yeah. Have you ever, before you even married Isaiah Williams, did you ever leave him because of this abuse? How many times do you think you left him? Tell us about and why you would go back with Mr. Williams. Uh, he would claim that uh, he would be using me more and always bring out the child. Your Honor, may I approach? You may. Um, I am approaching with two documents. Both of them are Exhibit 10. Do you recognize these documents, Denise? Yeah. Okay, the first page is the certificate, correct? What's the second page? The second page is when the... Sorry, Mary. Okay. Well, what date and what year were you married to Mr. Williams? And uh, uh, January 23rd, 1979. And in what state were you married? Okay. Your Honor, I'd ask that Exhibit 10 be admitted as a two page document. Any objection of what, dear? No objection for exam purposes, Your Honor. Exhibit 10 is admitted. Tell me about, uh, well, where were you living at the time? We were living in Michigan. Tell me about why you and Isaiah Williams got married in the state of Ohio. Um, it was a quick way to get married. Whose whose decision was that? Mutual. Uh, okay. When you came back to Michigan, did the abuse continue? Yeah. I'm going to take you back to Valentine's Day of 1979. Um, were you living here in Michigan at that time? Were you living with Isaiah Williams? Yeah. You were legally married to him, correct? Correct. Right. Was there an assault that happened to you at that time that involved a weapon? Yeah. Tell me about that. Um, I was being with a rifle and I was uh, trying to conceal my, myself and I ended up with a broken arm. Do you recall if, if Mr. Williams ever fired that gun at you? Yeah. Tell me, how, tell me about that. Tell the court how, what happened. Shooting at me as I was running and I so he raised my top of my head. Well, it did not hit you though, correct? No. Um, did you report this incident to the police? Yes. Was a warrant actually issued for Mr. Williams' arrest? Yes. Do you remember whatever happened to that case? Did it ever go to court? No. Okay. Why did it not go to court? I don't know. May I approach your honor? You may. Denise, I'm handing you two documents that is Exhibit 24. Um, these are some court documents. Do you recognize what these are regarding? When did you, the first time, when did you file for divorce the first time? That was in uh, 1980. Uh, are you pregnant with Elisa yet? Okay. 
So you tried to divorce Mr. Williams before you were pregnant with Elisa, correct? What happened to that divorce? It was dismissed. Um, do you remember why it was dismissed? Uh, he never uh, responded. He wasn't served or didn't respond? Right. So the court dismissed it? Your Honor, that's the People's 24, a two-page document. It's a docket from the court as long in a court order dismissing the divorce pending. For exam purposes only, Your Honor, no objection. Exhibit 24 is admitted. Why were you trying to divorce Mr. Williams at that time? I didn't want to be there anymore. Was the abuse continuing? The approximately, if you bring it back to May of 1980, um, did you, you know, you said the divorce was dismissed. Were you separating yourself from Mr. Williams physically at that time, staying away? At that time, when you talked just a, a few moments ago about him being incarcerated, did you have a relationship with somebody else? Um, yeah, I had one Okay. And did you become pregnant with Elisa? Yeah. At that time, were you working? Yeah. Where were you working? Okay. How long did you work at the university? I worked there uh, from, from 80 to 81. Were you still working there January 27th of 1981? Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm going to bring you back to that date. Do you recall an incident where you were working that day when Mr. Williams contacted you? Yeah. Okay, tell us about what happened that day. He had contacted me, um, saying that he wanted to talk to me. And I had, um, it was on a payday. It was on a Friday. And I had, um, I had already cashed my check and I had put it in my desk. I worked, um, on campus, so I was working in the office and I had put it in my locket in my desk. And he, because um, I know how he is. And okay, so, explain a little more. Why were you locking him on you? Because then he would ask for it. Okay. Was that yeah. common? Yes. Okay, go ahead. So, um, um, but when he, when he puts me out of his car, the car was all packed and stuff. And I asked him where was he going? And he said that he had to get away. And, uh, and that's when we ended up there. Denise, let me ask you, was it your intent to move with Isaiah Williams to the city of Cincinnati in no. January of 1981? No. Okay. Um, tell me what happened in that car to you on that day. Well, he had picked up a hitchhiker and, um, and he told me not to say anything. And uh, he had... And I had said something, I don't remember what it was, and he called off and slapped me. And, um, and so I then he had me get down on the floor of the, of the car. The floorboard of the car? Yeah. Okay. Um, did he tell you where you were going? No. When you ended up in Cincinnati, Ohio, did you just end up there? You didn't know where you were going? Did you have any of your belongings? Uh, and I think you testified already you had this job at U of M, correct? Right. Did you notify them you were moving to Ohio? No. Tell us what happened when we get there to Cincinnati, Ohio. Uh, we ended up in the, um, ended up putting our place um, together and he had, um, and then I, and you know that I was um, getting bigger, and then we went and had a physical done, and found out that I was pregnant. But the, the day you got in his car in Ann Arbor in January of 1981, did you yourself know you were pregnant at that time? No. Okay. Um, when you got to Cincinnati, Ohio, did you know anyone there? No, no friends or family? Um, did Mr. Williams allow you to call back to your, your family here in Michigan? Not right away, no. okay. Tell us about that. How how is he stopping you from doing that? I did have access to a phone and she all together. 
Did he control what you could do? Yes. Did he ever threaten you? Yeah. What would he say? He would say that um, I, I called to call my parents that he would um, take me. And he had beaten you before, correct? Yeah. Is that something you were afraid of? Yes. Did you lose your job back here in Michigan ultimately because of this? Yes, when I finally called them, of course I had lost my job like two weeks later, no, no show. And I had, um, so I told my supervisor to unlock my um, door and get my cash. When you get back to Cincinnati, and I know you were, I'm gonna, Jump uh, back a little bit. You were talking about how you discovered you were pregnant with Elisa. Before you discovered that, did Mr. Williams continue to physically abuse? Yeah. What would he do when you moved to Ohio? He would just, you know, punch me and choke me. Did you ever seek out any services there in Cincinnati, Ohio, to help with any convenience? Yes, I uh, went to the women's shelter. When you went to the women's shelter there, um, would Isaiah ever show up? Find you? Eventually, yes. Yeah. Did you go back with him? Yes. Tell the court, um, kind of take us through why you're going back with him. Do you, did you feel like you had a choice? Well, I, you know, he was always saying that it would be better and, you know, that. It's always about the pretense about that, you know, it would be good and that, you know, he wouldn't be beginning anymore. In that moment, would you believe him? Yeah. He could convince you? Yeah, he convinced me, say that he loves me, and, you know. You said that you started getting bigger, so you went to a clinic? Yes. Tell us about that. Tell us how that happened. Well, he was with me in the doctor's office, and um, when I realized that he probably wasn't a father, I got beaten and poked with a stick, like with a drumstick, and um, and I felt that he was trying to make me a Where was he specifically assaulting you on your body when he found out you were pregnant? He was kicking me in the stomach area. In the following months, to him finding out one, you're pregnant, and two, him discovering he can't be the father. Um, did he ever talk to you about having an abortion? Did you remember? At that time, when you moved to Cincinnati, Ohio, with him, did you have a job? Were you able to make some money for you? I worked as a temporary service. Did Mr. Williams ever ever demand or order you to go make some money for him in other ways? Yes, he did once. What did he say? Well, the that was back in '79 uh, Valentine's Day. What did he say? He told me to go and make money. This was during a visit. And at that time, I didn't realize that my, this was after the fact that my arm was broken. And um, he wouldn't take me to the doctor. So when I left, I wrapped up and started walking. Denise, a few weeks before Elisa's born. So Elisa's born August 10th, correct? Is that 1981? 81. Okay. So I think if you recall telling the police you went back to Michigan around July, July 24th, maybe a few weeks before Elisa was born? Yeah. What was your purpose in going back to the state of Michigan? Going back to Michigan? Yes. Family. At that point in Ohio, is, is Mr. Williams still abusing? Yes. And you're pregnant with Elisa, correct? Is that a yes? 
Yeah. Okay, I'm just going to remind you to use words so that the record's clear. Okay, Denise? When you went back to Michigan, uh, were you intending on leaving Isaiah at that time? Yes. How did you get back to Michigan? I took the Greyhound. And did you go stay with your parents? Yeah. Where were your parents living at the time? Yeah, in Ann Arbor. Where did you uh, deliver Elisa on August 10th? St. Joe Hospital. Did you see Isaiah Williams at that hospital? No, not until later. When did when did you see Isaiah Williams after giving birth to your daughter? He had came to my room. Um, again, he had a wedding ring. I had um, I don't remember really happened to the first one, but he had a wedding ring saying that you know things would be good. And that he would face as you know, his child. So at that time, Mr. Williams, did he acknowledge he knew he wasn't the biological father, correct? Yes. He told you he would raise Lisa as his own, correct? Correct. At that time, were you still legally married from him? Still married to him, rather? Yeah. But he showed up with a ring, correct? Is that a yes? Yes, I'm sorry. Oh. Was he asking you to get back together with him? What was your state of mind at that time? I wasn't sure. Um, I had, um, I was being with my parents again and um, going back and forth, I guess, in my mind, if I should go or not. Were you conflicted? Did you eventually decide to take <coughs> Eliza and go back with Mr. Williams and say Mary to it? Did you move back to Ohio? Yes. How about how, how old was Alyssa when you when you took her and moved back to Ohio? She's about probably about around six months. So now we're in what maybe late nineteen eighty one, early nineteen eighty two. Does that sound fair? Okay. When you get back to Ohio. Is Mr. Williams living up to his promises? Is he being good to you? For a minute, for, yeah. Okay. So when that minute is over, what happens? Is it physical abuse that you've already described, the punching, hitting, choking? What would trigger the abuse on you? Anything. Anything. I mean, when he was gone, I was. Fine, and then uh, I, you know, come in and I get um, thin and it goes hot because I never know what's going to trigger me in that Super Bowl. Would you ever during this time period, oh, this is about six months old, see us beating you, would you ever leave and, and go to shelters like you stated you had done before? Yeah. How many times do you think you did that when you lived in Ohio? Probably about twice. I think, Ms. Janice, you had told the police that at that time you believed Isaiah had other women in your in the home, correct? Yes. Did you ever confront him about that? Yes. What would he tell you? He would say, you know, that it wasn't true, but, but I knew it was. Was it to your benefit to continue confronting him, or did you just leave it alone? Tell us why. Get Back when you're living on Ohio with Lisa and Isaiah, are you the primary caregiver? Yes. So when you go back to Ohio, are you working still tap jobs? I will work temp jobs, yeah, right now. Yeah. Would you ever leave Olissa with Isaiah when you would go to work? Yes. Okay. Tell me about his care of Olissa when you would leave her in, in his care. When you me, she would be 30. She had a 30 diaper. In, in your opinion, did he care for her properly? Mm -hmm. No. In December of 1981, do you recall Mr. Williams contacting your mom? 
telling telling her to take you back, take you back to Michigan. Yeah. Tell me about that. Well, my parents said, hey, you see about me and when they left me, they said I should have went back with them. What did you inquire what he meant by that? You should have gone back with them. What did that mean? Did you at some point have to write a letter to your to your rental office, to your home to take them off that property? Can you tell us what that was about and why that happened? He said that um, that we had to be and that um, what me to sign the affidavit saying that I was. Um, that I'm taking off the lease and that I'll be Why did and you sign it and have it notarized? Well, how can you tell me? How can he make you sign that? What did he do? He was just you know saying that I don't remember exactly. Would he ever threaten you? And did you actually type out that letter to take you and Elisa off the property, take take away any of your rights to that property? Yeah. Okay. Your Honor, may I approach? Yes. Denise, I'm handing you people's proposed 23. Is this the letter that we're talking about? Yeah. Um, and is that the letter that you typed December 6, 1981? See some signatures on that. Whose signatures are? You signed it, and I signed it, and the um, I had it with me signed it. So, Your Honor, I'd ask the people's 23 be admitted. Objection or voir dire? Objection for exam purposes only. If it's 23, is admitted. Denise, can you tell us what the, what the purpose of this, what, I don't want to say, what Isaiah Williams gained from this? Objection as to speculation, unless she knows. If you know, what was the purpose of signing this letter? Had he expressed to you that you should leave? The she this? said probably. Well, I'm trying to. I'm trying to ask. Yes. Her. I'll sustain the objection, but I'll let you refresh. Had he had Mr. Williams actually said to you that he did not want you at that time in December of '81? You were almost living in Yeah. Did you and Alyssa actually move out at that time? Okay, where did you go? I went uh, to a friend. Did you ever go back to Michigan during that period of time to see your family? Or to see your other daughter? I did. Okay. Do you remember how long you, you stayed in Michigan before you came back to Ohio? No. Did you think about staying in Michigan at that time until the center and not coming back to Ohio? I thought about it. Tell us why you ultimately came back to Ohio. The problems is that I that I uh, wanted I really wanted the marriage to work. Back in Ohio around March of 82, 1982, did you file for a separation at that time? Okay. Where were you living at that time? And we went with my friend. Is that the friend that you mentioned earlier, Diane? Diane, yes. Yeah. Diane Taylor? Yeah. Okay. How did you know Diane? Uh, we met at uh, work. When you're staying with Diane, is that also in the city of Cincinnati? Yeah. Are you staying and you have only someone? Yeah. Are you still her primary friend? Yeah. At that time, when you're staying with Diane, uh, is Isaiah skiing on this visiting? And at that time in March of 1982, um, if he's not visiting with her, it's fair to say he's not taking care of her on his own, correct? The end of March 1982, did you have contact with Mr. Williams um, in which he physically assaulted you again? Yes. Do you remember what happened that time? And um, at that time, we were at Diane's mom's house, mother's house, and we had um, knocked on the door, and he took me and took Olisa and drove off. 
I'm not talking about April, I'm talking about March. Was there an incident maybe a month before that where you found your belongings in the hallway? Do you remember that incident? Yeah. Yeah. About how much time before Alyssa is taken did that happen? If you can remember. I know I'm talking about 41 years ago, but was it a long time, a short time? It was a short time. Okay. Tell me about that. Found your belongings in your hall. Yeah, I packed on stuff and put them in the hallway and when let me back into the apartment. In April of 92, you're still living with Diane? Okay. Are you still working at the, the temp jobs at that time? No. Okay. You already talked about the dates of April 29th. So about two days before that, April 27th, 1982, did Mr. Williams contact you from jail? Yes. Okay, tell me about that. Uh, he said that his brother was going to be um, wiring some money. And he um, wanted me to, I guess it's coming to question you, and he wanted me to bring it to him. But, and I used it to get him out. So you... We got him some money to get to, to bond him out, bail him out of jail. Right. Okay. Was there an argument ultimately about that money? Yeah, because he was going to use the, all, the whole money to pay his rent. Did you use some of the money? For transportation. To get to the jail, correct? Right. Okay. And it was Mr. Williams upset about that? Yes. What happened? Uh, that is altercation. Tell me about that altercation. At that point, during the physical abuse, are you, where are you at when this is happening? Well, location-wise, I'm sorry. Are you at his, at his apartment or at Diane's? I was at his apartment. Were you able to get out or did he lock you in there at some point? He had locked me in. Tell us about that. How did that happen? He had, um, Said that I wasn't going to go anywhere. And he had locked me in a closet. Who had Alyssa at this time? Um, Diane. About how much time had passed for you? Alyssa, you were still locked in, in Mr. Williams' apartment. Had a lot of time passed? Yes. Okay. So what happened ultimately? They ended up calling um, Child Protective Services and they didn't have it. Is that because ultimately you did show back up at Diane's? Right. Where were you when you did show up at Diane's? Okay. Was that voluntarily at his place? No. Were you able to get Alyssa back on, on April 29, 1982? Yes. That was from CPS? Yes. Denise, let's talk about the date of April 29, 1982. Were you again at Diane Taylor's apartment? Yeah. Was it an apartment or a house? I should add. It was like a town home. Town home. Was Diane home at the time, or was it just you and Alyssa? Just me and Lisa and Diane. If I'm doing the math correct. I think Alyssa would have been about eight, almost nine months old at that time. Does that sound about right to you? Yeah. Did Isaiah show up? Yeah. Tell us what happened. That's when he showed up and um, yeah, when I opened the door, I had a in my arm. And he, he just, he didn't really do anything. He just said that uh, he was here. I told him that he couldn't see her and he got me down. And he took my daughter. Are you sure? Ma'am, if you want to take a break, you may. If you pardon.
Denise, do you remember if Isaiah said anything to you bring that down to your daughter? There's some water for you there, Denise. When he knocked you down, did you have Olisa in your arms? Yeah. He had taken me to bed when I fell. And he ran up and up and they got the car and went off and I called the police. And they said they couldn't do anything because they found her certificate. He was her legal father, correct? Correct. This is 1982, correct? Yeah. Denise, have you seen your daughter Elisa since that date, April 29th, 1982? No. That would be 41 years this past Saturday, correct? Is that true? You can answer out loud. Yes. When you called the police, what police department did you call? Okay. Was Mr. Williams eventually arrested either that night or, or the next day? Yeah. Okay. Um, do you know if he had Olisa with him at that time? Okay. Did you see Olisa at that time? No. Did you go to court to see the defendant when he got arrested? Yeah. Um, was he asked about where Olisa was at that time? No. When he got out of jail, would he tell you where Olisa was? No. Did you ask? Yes. Did you actually speak to him the day that he was he was uh, let out of jail, April 30th, 1982? I have to be brought it back before. And they did want there. In the state of Ohio, at that time, did you go to court and get sold by her in custody of Olisa? I did. Did you also get a personal protection order against Mr. Williams at that time? Or may I approach? You may. Thank you. Denise, I'm going to show you seven pages that's been marked as people's proposed exhibit 25. Do you recognize those documents as it relates to what we're talking about with the PPO, the personal protection order? Okay. What is that? This is a. go through all the pages. For the record, Grant, there are seven pages to this document. Okay. Thank you. What, when were you ordered? Does the, the document reflect when you were ordered temporary custody? That's the judgment indicating that you, at that time, the court in Ohio was giving you sole custody of Olisa. Right. Was Olisa in your custody or did you have her at that time? No. Your Honor, I'd ask that people's 25 be admitted. Objection or voir dire? No objection for exam purposes only. Exhibit 25 is admitted. Did you know at that time in May, at the time you were granted sole custody of Olisa, whether or not Isaiah was in the state of Ohio or somewhere else? Were you trying to contact him? Yes. Okay. Were you having any luck connecting with him or having any conversations with him at that time? No. Before we go over the next few weeks and months of time, Tell me about Elisa as a baby. Was she physically healthy? 
Did she have any underlying health conditions that you knew about at that time? Any underlying medical conditions um, that would make her ill or anything like that that you knew about? Was she up to date on her immunizations, her, her shots that she should have had at that age? Well, um, so, yeah, so that time. Was she being breastfed at that time still? But you were the sole primary caregiver, I think you testified, correct? So you were the one to, to care for her and feed her, correct? Yeah. Your Honor, may I approach? Yes, you can. Denise, people's proposed aid, do you recognize what that is? Yeah. What is that? And that's from the clinic in, is that in Ohio? Okay, and does that reflect her immunization card that you recall as far as what she was up to date to? Um, Your Honor, I would ask that people's aid be admitted. No objection for exam purposes on exhibit eight is in May. The next few weeks that go by between April 29th, I should say June of 1982, are you still in the state of Ohio at this time? I have been, um, did you come back to Michigan in June? Uh, I think it was around June. Okay. At that time, did you know where Orisa was? I assume that she was with him in Michigan. But you had at that time you did you had I had you seen not. her? No, I hadn't seen her. When you were still in Ohio before you came back to Michigan, did you make any efforts to try to put out the information to the public to try to find her? Yeah, I put it at the newspaper. Okay. Um, did you also put a missing poster uh, together? Yeah. Did you do that in Michigan or did you do that in Ohio? Okay. Your Honor, may I approach? You may. Denise, do you recognize what exhibit proposed exhibit four is a copy of? Yeah. What is that? Yeah, I put the paper if anyone knows more about the website and we'll see the paper. Okay. Was that the Cincinnati Inquirer at the time, or was it a different local paper? Okay. What was your purpose in putting out this information? If anyone that may know or know of her. Your Honor, I'd ask that people's four be admitted. Objection of what, dear? No objection for exam purposes only. Exhibit four is admitted. People's I should say, show you six and seven. They're the same things, they're just different organizations. Denise, people's proposed exhibit five. Is this the missing poster um, of a Lisa that you put together yourself? Yes. Okay. And uh, you put that together in the state of Michigan? Yes. Okay. What was the purpose behind doing that? I had um, joined up with the um, missing. The National Center for Living and Exploited Children. And uh, that was one thing that had to give me to a folks driver. And I had to visit Sergeant Canada, who was the uh, person who was the case at that time. Sergeant Canada was the officer in charge of the case back, back in 1982 from the Ann Arbor Police Department, correct? Correct. Okay. So the missing poster indicated information on who should be contacted if someone saw Holmes, correct? Correct. People six and seven were these also missing posters that were done by other organizations. Right. Did you provide that picture of Elisa to these organizations? Your Honor, I'd ask that five, six, and seven all be admitted. Objection of what here? No objection for exam purposes. Five, six, and seven are admitted. Did you also, um, Denise, contact multiple? I know you already said that you were uh, involved with the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. How, how were you involved? What did you actually do to get Elisa's information out there to try to find her? I had contact 
Kyle Fines, you said incorporated. Yeah. Um, did you write letters to news organizations? I wrote letters to news organizations. And um, to Carmen Harvey, who was doing the existing children of Michigan, and she was connected with Kyle Fines. Did you write letters also to um, Domino Pizza? I did. Tell me what the purpose behind that was. Um, I believe at that time they were putting bubbles on the children on the car. In terms of your communications with the mission, uh, the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, um, did you provide oh, Lisa's picture and information to them so they could distribute it to? Yeah. Corporations and news organizations all over the country. Right. Okay. Um, did you have a, a stack of letters from them to and from them that you provided to Detective Dan Iverson? Right. Thank you. That'd be a letter. Do you do you have correspondence from them that dates from about 1985 through 2014? Again, were your efforts, these were all efforts to getting Alyssa's information out there to find her one way or another? Right. You also provided your DNA to the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, correct? Yes. What was the point of that? Do you remember? That was through, uh, I think it was Venus. I think it was they, um, whenever they uh, have a, uh, in case I get to you know, a child was blind or deceased or alive, they can find out who they are through DNA. Did you also contact the Adam Walsh Resource Center at that time? Yes. And this is another organization you provided Elisa's picture and personal information to. Yes. I had several agents. At that time, did you have any idea where she was? No. Your Honor, I have a stack of exhibits at this time. I don't know if I can just have counsel go through them and then we can see if there are okay. stipulation to them for exam purposes. Um, this is just her impression photo. This is her letters to the news organization to get all this information out there. This is her letter to the YWCA. That's one page right there. And I think there is a stipulation for exam purposes only, and I'll, I'll read through what, what the okay. exhibits are. Um, exhibit 15 is, excuse me, exhibit 14 is a letter uh, registering Denise with Child Fine Incorporated. People's exhibit, and that's a, a two-page document. People's exhibit 15 is a letter from Denise to Child Find of America Incorporated. People's exhibit 13 is a letter um, from the YWCA um, regarding Miss um, Williams at that time, and Fraser, Fraser Daniel now, and her daughter Elisa being residents of the shelter that time in Ohio. Um, People's Exhibit 12, which is 16 pages, is what Miss uh, Fraser Daniel testified to her multiple letters to news organizations at that time. People's Exhibit 11 is a two page document. They are age progression photos of Elisa Williams. Um, from the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. Um, there's two different ones. People's Exhibit 17 is a 68-page document. Your Honor, those are the letters from the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children from 1985 to 2014. Um, People's Exhibit 16 is a six-page document. The letters to and from Domino Pizza, Mr. Tom Monahan. Again, uh, Ms. Fraser Daniel testified to that as well. People's Exhibit 18 is a five-page document uh, notifying that Ms. Fraser Daniel has provided her DNA um, to be tested against a database for missing children from the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. Excuse me, Council. I just want to make sure the 68-page document is Exhibit. That is Exhibit 17, Judge. Sorry, 17. I'm a little order on it. It's okay. And then six, the six-page document that followed that was Exhibit Six page do document to Domino Pizza yes. is 16. That's 16. 16. Gotcha. And then the National Center, the 68 page document is 17. Thank you. The DNA document is 18. That's five pages. 
People's Exhibit 19 is, uh, again, a letter to a news organization on a Western Union mailgram. And then People's 20 is the letter um, to Ms. Williams from the Adam Walsh Resource Center. I'd ask at this time all those be uh, admitted with the stipulation only for exam purposes. Stipulation, Your Honor. All right, exhibits, looks like it's 11 through 20. Yes. Um, will be admitted. Thank you, Judge. Denise, at some point, um, I'm telling us what I said, you, you come back to Michigan to find a Lisa. I, mean, I think you already testified you believe that was around June of 1982, correct? Did you retain an attorney at that time? Yeah. Who was your attorney at that time? Follow what was your point in giving yourself an attorney then? Uh, and, yeah. and did you do that through your attorney file all those documents in the in the Washtenaw County Family Court? Yes. And were those documents, did those begin to be filed in June and July of 1982, if you remember? Yes. Did you also get a restraining order? Yes. Yeah. One of the other things, uh, Ms. Ms. Frazier, I know that I know you, you we talked about, did you write a letter to the U.S. Department of State? Yes. What was the purpose behind uh, contacting the U.S. Department of State? So, um, so you tried to stop uh, Elisa's social security number from being used to get a passport, correct? Were you successful in doing that and contacting the U.S. Department of State? Yeah. Okay. Um, and you provided them some information and they were able to at least take that information to stop her from getting a passport. And did you also sign a waiver of uh, attorney client Ms. Reno so that she could speak to both the news and to speak to Detective Dan Iverson? Yes. Okay. That's two waivers in there. Oh, two different waivers. This is just to the use department. Of state. Yeah. Your Honor, I believe there's a stipulation for admission just for exam purposes only. If that's correct, Your Honor. Those exhibit numbers are again? That is 21 and 22. 21, Your Honor, is a four page document yes. from the U.S. Department of State regarding Melissa to not have a passport. 22 is a two page document. Those are two waivers of attorney client privilege. That's yeah, true. 21 and 22 are admitted. When you came back to Michigan, you talked to Isaiah Williams by phone. Did you ever talk to him in person, um, outside of court, or did you always talk to him in, uh, by phone? By phone. Did you ask him, where is Melissa? Yeah. What did he tell you? He always gave me different stories each time. He was saying, if I got 5,000, I could get her. He said that she was across the water. What does that mean? She's across the water. I don't know. Yeah. You said he told you if you had five thousand dollars, you could get her back. Yeah. Um, did he also tell you that she she had died? He said that that died from a high fever or something like that. Did you subsequently call any of the local hospitals? I saw hospital, even Barrow and Banting. All over. We were ever, ever able to confirm that Elisa had died of some medical condition. Then. Did Isaiah ever tell you in any of these phone calls or any of your conversations with him when you came back to Michigan that he killed her? How many times did he tell you that? Did he tell you how he killed her? But he told you that more than once. Back when he told you that, at that time, did you believe that? Tell us why. No, I just thought that she was still here. She was still here. Six 
since then, since Mr. Williams has been charged in, in 2021, have you gone forth with proceedings to obtain a death certificate for Lisa? Yeah. And tell us about that. Tell us why. Tell us why you, I don't want to say waited, but why you waited to, to do that for for 40 years. That's when I heard that she was no longer here. This was the wonder of I. Is it difficult to do that, to, to move forward with proceedings like that, like taking that certificate? Yeah. We to now we're in the timeline of September of 1982. The vacuum shift of the Obtuning Medicino was the top He told you these multiple different stories, correct? About September 2nd, 1982, did you go to a funeral? Yeah. Whose funeral? Who's lost? Tell us about that. I've been hoping that I see Did you see Olisa there? Did you see Isaiah there? Yeah. Did you notify the police at that time that Isaiah would be there um, and that they should go there? Okay. You know, anyway. A couple of weeks after that, did Isaiah contact you uh, about Lisa? Yes. Okay. What happened? Tell us about that. Do you remember what date that was? If I was to show you a police report, would that help refresh your recollection of the date? Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm not going to Yes, you may. <laughs> Anticipate. Please, I'm showing you a copy of the City of Inkster Police Department incident report. Um, does that look familiar to you? Yeah. Okay, um, is there a date reflected on that report? Does that refresh your memory as to this incident we're, we're talking about now? The incident with Inkster Police Department, did you go meet Isaiah in the city of Inkster regarding Olisa? Yeah. Why did you go to Inkster? What did he tell you? He said, if I met him, that I would. And did you meet him at a motel, a Mona Lisa motel? Yes. Okay. Tell us what happened when you got there. Oh, well, it happened. Well, Lisa was not there? No. Okay. Was Isaiah there, though? There. Because tell us what, what happened after that. Uh, he was the that I was having an affair with his brother. Which was totally untrue. And he started uh, meeting me. And this time it was really worse. It was bad. Why was it really worse? Why was it bad? My face was all moved up and uh, my eyes were all bloody. And um, he told me to go into the bathroom and clean up. I went into the bathroom and closed the door and then I jumped out the window. Yeah. What floor were you on? Uh, Did you contact the police? Uh, the manager did. And was Isaiah Williams ultimately arrested? Was he arrested? Uh, I don't think he was. I mean, he was gone. He was going to the hotel when the police got there. Say yes. Yeah. Eventually, was he arrested though? Yeah. Okay. 
did you go to court for that? Yeah. At that time, are you able to talk to Isaiah and ask him any further information about Lisa or where she's at? Does he tell you any additional information? Let's talk about the Washtenaw County Family Court proceedings. Um, you've already testified that Molly Reno, your attorney, filed the documents on your behalf in June and July, correct? Did she file for divorce for you? What about child uh, custody for you to have custody of yeah. In about February of 1983, February 1st, 1983, do you remember court proceedings where Isaiah testified? Yeah. Was he ordered at that time by the court to bring Lisa forward to produce her to bring her to court? To bring her forward. Do you remember that? Okay. But in the hearing in February of 1983, did Isaiah talk about in court about ultimately where Lisa was? He Saying that she was, she was at our Island Park, passed out in his car or whatever, and when he came to, she was gone. Is Island Park in the city of Ann Arbor? Yeah. And that's in Washington County, correct? Do you know if there's a body of water that, that goes through Island Park? Yeah. So Mr. Williams in court claimed that he was passed out in his vehicle. Am I hearing that? And then when he awoke, Olisa was gone, correct? Right. What about Olisa's belongings? Did he ever indicate her belongings were still in the car? He didn't. Did Mr. Uh, Williams say whether he reported this, this you know, mysterious disappearance of Olisa to the police? No. And I should have asked that better. That was a terrible question. Um, when you say no, does that mean he did not report he it did. or he didn't say it? He didn't report it. Was Mr. Williams ultimately arrested in court and held in contempt of court? Yeah. Did you go to see him during that period of time in the jail to try to ask where Olisa was? Yeah. And what did he tell you, if anything? Nothing. Would he even answer you at that time? He was in the um the divorce was finalized june 2nd 1983 sound correct to you yeah. um who had custody of Lisa at that time who was granted custody of her by that point we're talking june of 1983 um you had not seen her for a year correct <laughs> when mr williams um was released from jail for those contempt proceedings. Would he, would he call you? Call and, you know, after me. What does that mean? And either he will call and say that, you know, I asked him about Elise and he will always say different stories. And again, are, these, are any of these the same stories he told you before that you testified to? Any of them ever different? Any different versions of the events that he ever told you in those calls? When he was released from jail, did he ever tell you again that he killed her? Did he tell you that before he went to jail? Denise, do you know of any close family members of Isaiah that live in Alabama? You have no knowledge of any of these people, no. if they exist, correct? Let me ask this. Um, when you contacted the police here in Michigan, you went to the Ann Arbor Police Department, correct? Yeah. What made you go to Ann Arbor? Yeah, okay. Right. Um, had Isaiah also um, at that time told you about Island Park? Yeah. Okay. And did you know at that time Island Park was a park that was in the city limits of Ann Arbor? Yeah. Okay. 
Um, did that also play into your decision to go to Ann Arbor Police Department? Or had you gone to them already? Uh, I think that's right. Okay. Is that where your parents lived at the time, Ann Arbor? Do you know if uh, Mr. Williams was also, when he came back to Michigan, residing in different locations within Washington? Uh, okay. I don't have any further questions. Thank you. Cross examination. Thank you. Did you need a break, ma'am? Ma'am, are you good? Okay. Good afternoon. Um, you stated that over the years, when you would talk to Mr. Williams about Elisa, he gave you multiple answers, correct? And you didn't believe any of them, correct? You thought he was just hiding her from you? Okay. And you stated that you also um, submitted your DNA to one of the missing and exploited children databanks in case a DNA hit happened when they recovered a missing child or a deceased child or something like that, correct? You never got any DNA hits, correct? And you're not aware of exactly who his relatives are in Alabama? I've never heard of him to anybody. Okay, so you don't know if he has relatives there or not. You just aren't sure. Okay, and you've never investigated that, correct? Okay, no further questions. All right, any reader? Just briefly. Yeah. When you said you didn't believe any of his stories, um, is it because he told you so many different stories? Yeah. At that time, um, we're talking about 1982 and 1983 when he's making these statements. Is that fair? Yeah. And so we're talking about six months to a year after Olisa disappeared, correct? Yeah. It's now been 41 years since you've seen her. What do you believe happened to your daughter? What is she's In terms of giving your DNA, um, Back earlier in the investigation, you did have to uh, serve some remains of a baby in New York. Do you remember that? Yeah. Was that Elisa? No. In terms of your DNA that you've been given um, to other people who have come forward um, saying they, they might be Elisa, has any of that ever produced Elisa? I have no further questions. You good? Is it fair to say that Mr. Williams? terrorized you for the time of period that you've known him, correct? He didn't, you never witnessed him terrorizing Elisa though, correct? No, not probably no. Okay, no further questions. Right. Yeah. Ma'am, you may step down. Thank you. I think I know what I needed to do, but... Um, well, I do, and I... Don't know if the folks in the courtroom are hungry or want to take lunch. Um, I excuse most of them and have them come back at one anyway. So most of my witnesses have taken Oh, okay. Fantastic. But I don't need you guys falling out either. So why don't I why don't we do this? Why don't we take about 45 minutes for lunch? I can take care of my business and then do that. So we'll come back about a quarter to two and we'll proceed. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Court standing in recess. <laughs>